Okay, good evening once again. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Okay, so once again, I would like to um, invite you, your attention, as we study once again God's Word. So this is the seventh night and the second to the last. So hopefully you are learning something from our series and hopefully uh, it helps you a lot with your spiritual journey with God, especially your encounter with Him. Okay, this evening... Um, our topic is very simple, but I would like to again encourage you to attentively listen and may it help us to uh, be transformed once again into His likeness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we would like to praise you and thank you for the opportunity that you had given us this evening to study your words, learn from you. And we pray, Lord, may you help us, give us a humble and teachable heart. Please, Lord, change us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the title of our series or our topic this evening is The Two Boats. How many here have the experience already of riding a boat? Okay. Have you experienced riding a boat without, I don't know what do you call that in English, but uh, we call that in Tagalog, um, Katig. You know, I don't know how do you call that in English. What is the English for katig? Okay. When this picture, I was able to take this picture in um, Angat Dam or Angat, yeah, Angat Bulacan. So that river actually is the um, reservoir for, for the water that supplies the whole Manila. Okay, so that is uh, Angat actually, and we went to, um, I, forgot, I forgot the name of the place, Malot, Malot Angat Bulacan. Now, when we, when we went there, we did not expect that the, that the place is actually like that, no? And we did not expect that we are going to ride a boat for two hours. And that only that, we are riding, we, we rode a boat without katig. And imagine, because the katig of the boat, or let's say the wing, no? the wing of the boat, is actually the reason why the boat can, ano, can uh, balance itself, right? And that's why it, 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 it is safe to ride Sa, sa bangka because of, the, of, of that thing. However, in our case, when we went there, we did not expect that the boat has no cutting. So, we don't have any choice because that is part of our requirement to, to go there uh, as part of our cruise culture. I, I think you heard that already when we uh, had our testimony in, in PIC. So, we went there. But, the problem, our group, we are, because we, are, we, we were divided into, I think that is, that we are four groups. We are four groups. So the three went already ahead of us because there are only three available boats. So the four of us in our group were left uh, sa, sa, sa drop point. So we waited for... Four hours, because imagine two hours going there, so we, were, we are going to wait for the boat for another two hours, so that, that is uh, four hours of waiting. But sadly, the boat did not come, because that is already evening, and they are afraid of uh, going back during evening because of, of the lugs that might, you know, because they don't have, they don't have any light. So they decided to, to fetch us during the morning. So we waited for, for the morning. And after that, of course, they fetched us during the morning and we went there. But this is the problem. During the time, like what we are experiencing this, uh, what we experienced this morning, during the time, there, is, there was a heavy rain that we experienced as we go to Malot. And imagine 
imagine the boat has no katig. We are shivering. And I actually, when I look at my, my palm, I cannot, see, I cannot see any more blood on my palm because of, of the cold. So I'm afraid that, you know, because if I, you know, if I just move a little bit or I, if I just have a little uh, move, then you know already what will happen next because the boat has no cutting. So we're really afraid that time and we don't know what will, uh, what will happen to us. So we just prayed. We really prayed. And I realized that time that the Sea of Galilee is really true. Imagine the experience of the disciples when they had the storm going to the other side of Galilee. Two storms. They experienced two, two storms as recorded in the, in the Gospels. And I told myself, Lord, thank you for making me realize and, and helping me understand what it really means to be in the Sea of Galilee. And not only that, I realized that as we passed through the, that, that river, I realized after going to Malot, we met the Dumagats there, the, the natives there, and I realized that behind the water that supplies the whole Manila are people who are thirsting for education, for the righteousness of Christ, and for Christ himself. This evening, I would like to tell you a story as well that talks about a boat. The title, The Two Boats. The story begins in Luke chapter 15, 5 verse 1. This is the story of the encounter of Peter with Jesus Christ. Let's begin the story. 5 verse 1 says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And that's uh, the other term for, for Galilee. In verse 2, And he saw how many boats? Two boats. Now this is very interesting because the Sea of Galilee as I believe, it could have a lot of boats at the time because there are a lot of fishermen at the time. But Luke only recorded two boats and I don't know for what reason because he could say that there are four boats or there are five boats, but I don't know what's the reason of telling us there, that there are only two boats, but later on we will see that there is a purpose of telling this. By the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. In verse 3, getting into how many boat now? One of the boat. And whose boat is that? Simon. Peter. He asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Now, I'll be telling you three observations again and we're done. The first observation that I would like to tell you this evening that when Jesus called Peter, as one of his disciples, Luke recorded something that is very interesting in his calling. And what is that? Paul, uh, Luke recorded that at that, that time, there are only two boats. This is very interesting because despite of the fact that Galilee has a lot of fishermen and there might be a lot of boats at that time, Luke intentionally mentioned only two boats to signify that among the two boats, God, Jesus, intentionally chose Peter. It says that he went to one of the boats and that was owned by Peter. Friends, I would like to tell you this evening that when God calls each one of us here, He calls us intentionally because we are, first observation, chosen by Him. Discipleship does not, does not, does have not, tama yung term ko? Or yung grammar ko? Have nothing to do with what we can do for God. Discipleship is all about our chosenness. We 
were chosen by Jesus. Nothing more and nothing less. It's simply because He chose you. Second observation. Verse 3, getting into one of the boat, boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Verse 4, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, okay, Simon, can you put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch? So what happened? And Simon answered, what's the, what's the word? Master, master, we toiled all, all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. Now, this is very interesting as well because you will find three things in this, in this uh, two verses. Let's go back to verse 4. In verse 4, it says, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. The argument of Peter when he told uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus, we already toiled for, for, for the whole night and we did not catch anything. And now you are telling us to catch, to, to go to the deep and catch fishes. Lord, you know what's the reason why, why, Peter, why Peter told uh, Jesus uh, in, in that way? Because in the Sea of Galilee, and actually in, in, uh, in, um, in the case of the fishermen, if they are fishing, the best time to fish is during the night. And second, Jesus told Peter to, to let the nets uh, be put down on the deep water, but in the case of Galilee, it is best to catch fishes in shallow water. And third, Peter have this in mind. Jesus, you're telling me something that is very ironic. I think you are crazy. Don't teach us how to, fi to fish because you are a carpenter. This is very ironic because a carpenter commanded a very professional fisherman to catch his net on the dip during the morning. And you can imagine why Peter doubted Jesus Christ. But in the next verse, in verse 5, it says that he called him what? Master. And you know what? It is only in the book of Luke that you can find the word master. You can find a lot of master in the Gospels, but usually it, it is being translated as rabbi. Came from the, the, the Hebrew word or the Greek word, rabbi. But in this case, it is a different Greek word, and it is only Luke who used this word master. And you know what's the word, what's the meaning of master here? The meaning of master here is acknowledging that, that someone who asked you, who commanded you, his, is someone who is author, authoritative, meaning he is someone who has authority. And so therefore, when, when Peter responded to the call or to the command of Jesus Christ, he recognized that, that someone, that Jesus, who is a carpenter and who commanded him to catch on the deep water during the morning, has an authority. And so therefore, he obeyed. Next verse, verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed, enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. Verse 7. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. sink. And verse 8, this interesting, verse 8 says, But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' Nis saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, who oh Lord. Second observation. Our disi discipleship is all about Jesus commanding us. And we are commanded this evening. He wants each one of, 
each one of us here to be his disciple. Friends, being a disciple is not about making sure first that you will get something from Jesus, that you will get something from God, that, but it's all about having that faith on that someone who has an authority over us. And Jesus is only asking our faith on Him and obey Him. And with that, like Peter, by obeying, we will experience miraculous things, things that we were we never seen before. Third observation. For he and all who were with him were asked to niche at the catch of fish that they had taken. And verse 10. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to who? To Simon, imagine Simon is with James and John, but Jesus intentionally only told to Simon. And later on, I believe that Simon Peter is the one who also called his, the other disciples. And what did Jesus tell him? Jesus tell him, do not be afraid, Simon. After being afraid that he is a sinful man and he, want, he wants Jesus Christ to depart from him, Jesus told him, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. You will be a fisher of men. Now, Jesus is telling him, Simon, I would like to declare you this day that you are no longer a fisher man, but a fisher of men. And you know what? After that, verse 11, and when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything. In Matthew, it says there that they left the, their father, they left their fishes, and they left their boats. They left everything and followed him. This is very interesting because in their greatest success, in, the, in their success, imagine they caught a lot of fishes that time and they could not actually, you know, hold those fishes because the nets are breaking. And what happened after getting those nets, finally, what they did is leave those nets and follow Jesus Christ. In their time of success, what matters most for them is the one who called them. Because third observation, discipleship is all about calling. Brother Dominic, what's the point? So what? I would like to tell you this evening that there is this very important command in the Bible coming from Jesus himself to his disciples. He said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and up to 20, and Jesus came and said to them, to the disciples, all authority in, in heaven and on earth has given to me. Verse 19, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and I am with you always. The word in verse 19, you can always hear this and, and, and actually read this, that the command is the word go. But actually, if you're going to read its original language or, or the Greek, the original command actually there is in the word make. Make disciples. Now what's the point? When Jesus commanded them, he wants them to make disciples as what he did, as what Jesus did to them. And now, this command was not only 
applicable for the disciples of Jesus Christ the time, but it is the command even until our time. And right now, friends, I would like to tell you that there is a church. A church that is calling each one of us not to be a denominationalist, but to be a Christian, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I would like to invite you this evening. You might be riding on one of those boats. And I believe Jesus is choosing you tonight. He chose to be on one of the boats because he chose us. And now he is commanding us to follow him because he wants to call us as one of his disciples as fisher of men. We studied already a lot of truths last night. You learned already about the Sabbath. You learned already about stewardship. You learned already about state of the dead. You learned a lot of truths already. You might be someone here tonight who for the first time know those truths. And now God is calling you to be one of his disciples. To be one of his chosen. To be one whom he commanded. And to be one whom he called. Will you stand tonight if you are that someone? And like what this command says, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior through baptism. If you are that someone, I would like you to stand. And show, Lord, I would like to accept you tonight. As you had said, you want me to, want to be one of your disciples. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your faithfulness. Lord, like Peter, thank you for speaking to us tonight and telling us that indeed discipleship is all about you who chose us, who commanded us, and who called us. All you want is for us to respond on that call, have faith on your command, and live everything that hinders us to have that encounter with you. Lord, I don't know who are the person here. Who wants to, to who wants to accept you as their personal savior? But I would like to dedicate them to you tonight, Lord. May you help them to realize the importance of this calling the importance of being one of your disciples and being one of your children. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your grace, and for your love. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. In Jesus' name, amen.